the ministry, family worship, where two ministries are one and Jesus is the head of all. And Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you that you are the most high God. And thank you, Lord, that you are light and in you there is no darkness. You have the ability and you do come and shine your light on all darkness. And when light comes, we know that darkness has to flee. Thank you, Lord, for translating us out of darkness into the marvelous light of the kingdom of your dear son, Jesus Christ. And for that, Father, we thank you. We thank you for, for your grace and your mercy that took us out of darkness, out of a confused mind, out of a dark mind, out of dark matter, took us out of that thing and translated us into the kingdom of your dear son, light. Thank you, Father. And because we are now in light, we have a sound mind. Therefore, we can make sound decisions, let alone, Father, we thank you for the one that's listening and the ones that's uh, watching and the ones that's before us. Right now, Father, we pray right now that your, that your word will touch the heart and go into the heart as if it was good grounds, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that the enemy will not come and steal the word, the seed that's been sown. Lord, as you give the spirit of wisdom and revelation, Lord, we pray that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Lord, we pray that the word of knowledge will come. We pray that the word of wisdom will come, that will bring a solution, that will bring us uh, peace in the listener and the one that's watching to their mind. For your word says, he who keeps his mind on your word, on you, Father, he'll keep it in perfect peace. So therefore, we that are in Christ Jesus, we have a perfect peace. Now for the ones who do not know Christ, Father, I pray that as you said in your word, that as Christ hath come, now that you will send the Holy Spirit to quicken the one who don't believe, to reveal who Christ is. And as they reveal who Christ is, bring a solution to their very need right now in the mighty name. Our precious name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for another day. Thank you for tuning in. You know, there are so many people who are walking every day. They walk in with lies in their very life. There are so many people in life that are walking around being deceived and are deceived. There are so many people in life that rather believe a lie than the truth. And a good portion of that is due to their self gain for selfish reasons, mm -hmm. to manipulate a situation or to manipulate a person. And it is so important to understand that whether it be today or whether it be tomorrow, there always will be a waking up, a quickening. Mm -hmm. Light always comes and shine out on darkness, Amen. regardless of what. Light always come and shine in darkness, regardless of what. Mm -hmm. So at one point, there is no excuse for anyone to continue to walk in and to live out a lie when light comes in and reveals truth. If that person decides to continue to walk in a lie, to believe the lie, after light has come in, woe unto that person. There are many times the Bible warns of being deceived. 
God repeatedly calls us to be on our guard against believing lies. And that's what deception is. Deception is believing what is not true. You see, it's one thing to be deceived by someone else. And it's another thing for you to deceive yourself. Now today, before I go into this topic, I must warn you that this topic is very touchy. And you're going to hear some things that's going to challenge you not to be the same, not to do the same, mm -hmm. and it's going to challenge you to do some evaluation on yourself. Must a man examine themselves? Yes. It's very important that a man, mankind, examine mm -hmm. themselves. You see... Today's topic I would like to talk about today is self-deception. <laughs> self-deception. Late last year, you may go back to the our website, www.myfamilyworships.com to review uh, the sermon, the preaching, the title called Self-Revelation. Revealing self, and this is part two to self-revelation. Although it's named self-deception, is still part of self-revelation. Uh, let's turn to Titus chapter three. You see, again, it's one thing for somebody else to deceive you, because that person takes part. Of that consequence. Mm. Mm. But when you deceive yourself. Ain't nobody there but you and God. And you have to. Fess up to the consequences. Mm. Titus 3. Verse 3. I'll be reading from the Amplified today. All the scriptures that I have. Not many. But I'll be reading from the Amplified Bible today so we can get a good grasp of what thus says the Lord. In order to grow, we must hear. We must hear the word of God because what faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God. So in order to grow, in order to have that guardrail, because the word of God is a guardrail, when one is driving, especially down uh, the I-95 or going north or south, near the ends of the, the roadway, the highway, they are rails there. And the rails keep you from going mm -hmm. over the cliff or... And God's word is a guardrail. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It keeps you in check. <clears throat> it keeps you from stepping out of mm -hmm. the light to go back into darkness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Titus chapter 3, verse 3. Amen. Thank you. For we too once were foolish. Uh-oh. So we too once were foolish, disobedient, mm -hmm. deceived, mm -hmm. enslaved to various sinful desires and pleasures, spending and wasting our time, excuse me, spending and wasting our life in malice. This word malice means purposely do self-will or purposely ill-will someone, meaning I purposely hurt someone. Mm -hmm. 
That's what malice means. When someone deliberately do ill will towards somebody else. So that's what malice means. So spending and wasting our lives in purposely hurting somebody, hurting people. You ever saw somebody or came across somebody who you see purposely hurt other people? Yeah. By their actions, by their words. Mm -hmm. So many spend their, and waste their lives in malice and envy. Hateful. Oh. Hating mm -hmm. one another. So at one point, Paul is directing to Titus and telling Titus that we too were once foolish. We too were once disobedient and deceived and enslaved mm -hmm. to the various sinful desires and lusts and pleasures, wasting our lives to hurting people purposely, mm -hmm. wasting our lives in envy and hateful and hating one another. Mm -hmm. But what happened? We, we, were, we were in this darkness. We were in this, this darkness at one point. But what happened? Verse 4 says, But when the goodness and kindness of God came. Th this, that's all what happened. We were in darkness. We were in sin. We were in the deceitfulness. We were in the pleasures of this world. The lust, the envy, the hatefulness, <laughs> the self-desires. We were in this darkness. But look what happened. Look, what came? Simply, goodness and kindness of God came to us. So when we say God is good, this is not a cliche. God is good. Why? Because it was out of his goodness and his kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared. So it was out of God's goodness and, and kindness that love for mankind appeared in human form as the man, Jesus Christ. So, Jesus is the human form of God's love. You see, love came down from eternity and took on a human form. Out of God's goodness and kindness. Amen. And look what it says, verse 5. He saved us. So, those who believe that you saved yourself, you are in self-deception. How can one say that they are? Or they can save themselves out of darkness. He saved us. God through Christ Jesus saved us. And look what it says. Not because of any works of righteousness that we have done. So we did not deserve and we did not do anything to deserve God's righteousness. It ain't no works that we have done. Mm -hmm. And the Bible do not lie. God's word cannot lie. There's no works that you and I can do that cause us and boast, allow us to boast and say that that works have saved us from sin and the wrath of God. It ain't nothing, no works of righteousness that we have done that saved us from sin darkness and the wrath of God. It was simply God's goodness and kindness and his love who was manifested through Jesus Christ who saved us. Let's read on. But because of his own compassion and mercy, God had compassion and mercy on you and I. Amen. God had compassion and mercy on you and I. 
who is able to deliver you out of the hand of the enemy. It only takes a stronger man to deliver you out of the strong man. Christ is the stronger man. And he is the only one that can deliver you out of the strong man. Out of Satan's hand and Satan's kingdom. So it's out of his own compassion and mercy, by the cleansing of the new birth, the spiritual transformation, the regeneration, and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out richly upon us through Christ Jesus, our Savior. So the Holy Spirit was poured out on us through Christ Jesus. That's why Jesus said in John 16, that if for your benefit I must go, that another of the same kind will come. The spirit of truth, the comforter. So this is why Paul said that the Holy Spirit was poured out richly upon us through Christ. Verse 7, so that we would be justified. So we are justified by God's grace and mercy, his compassion. Not that we did anything to deserve it. So that we be justified, made free of the guilt of sin by his, God's compassion, undeserved grace. And that we would be acknowledged as acceptable to him, acceptable to God, and made heirs of eternal life. The actual experiencing it according to the hope, his guarantee. So that way we made heirs of eternal life. So that's why we can boldly say that God has translated us out of the kingdom of Satan, darkness. Took us out of that, the kingdom of darkness of Satan, and translated us into the kingdom of light. The kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. And now that we are in God's kingdom, the light, we are heirs of eternal life. And that's why Jesus said that I come to give life and that you may have it more abundantly. So what happened if we were once fools, foolish, in our own lust, in our own disobedience, deceived and, and, and indulging in sinful desires and pleasures and wasting our times hurting people and, and hating people and being envy and jealous. And light came because of his goodness and his mercy and took us out of light. What made us go or what make us say things that will bring us or cause us to go back into what God has delivered us from? Something is not right. If God delivered us, which he did, why do we accept the lie? And cause us to go backwards by our words, by our actions, and receiving the lie. Why would we go backwards out of that thing, out of darkness in which God delivered us from? Something ain't right. Something is not right. Self-deception. The meaning of self-deception, so we can really understand what we're talking about. Self-deception is the act of lying to yourself or of making yourself believe something that isn't really true. So, self-deception is the act of lying to yourself or making yourself believe something that isn't really true. Let me go further. It is when a person gives up their rights, their power of the truth, and take a lie and convince themselves that that lie is the truth. Example, self-deception is when someone convinces 
or when a girl or a woman convinces herself that her boyfriend loves her even though he has told her several times that he wants to break up. She convinces herself that her boyfriend loves her, still loves her, even though several times he told her, I want to break up with you. So she convinced herself that her boyfriend still loves her in spite of he explained, I want to break up with her several times. You know, a lie cannot tell the truth. <laughs> and a lie cannot be the truth. A lie cannot tell the truth. And a lie cannot be the truth. Let's turn to James. No matter how you try to fix a lie, a lie cannot tell the truth. And a lie cannot be the truth. The lie or a lie is always opposite of the truth. No matter how you look at it. A lie will always be the opposite of the truth. James chapter 1 verse 16. Thank you. Here James is talking. Let's read James chapter 1 verse 16. Look what it says. Again, I'm coming from the Amplified. It says, do not be misled. Oh. Do not be misled. Meaning don't be deceived. My beloved brothers and sisters, one who was loved. He said, don't be. He's warning us. Don't be Misled, don't be deceived. Loved one, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. Every good thing that is given and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights. Come, look. It comes down from the Father of lights. Every good thing and every perfect gift has to be good, has to be perfect, because it comes from the Father who is good and who is perfect. The enemy, Satan, cannot give good gifts. Cannot give a perfect gift and good things because he is not good. Satan is not perfect. You can only give what you have. You can only give out of who you are. You can only give out who you are, meaning God is perfect, so therefore, he can only give out perfection. God is truth, so he can only give out truth. God cannot lie. Right? Satan is not perfect, so he can give out imperfections. Ah. Satan is not good. But he can only give out what's the opposite? You evil. Mm -hmm. Bad. Mm -hmm. Satan cannot give the truth because he is a liar. Mm -hmm. Satan cannot give the truth because he is a liar. And the Bible says he is the father of lies. Mm -hmm. God is the father of light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Satan is the father of lies. So the lie, the father of lies, cannot give something that's not inside of him. Hallelujah. 
Satan cannot give anything that's not inside of him. So therefore, he gives lies because he is the father of lies. In Matthew 16, it says, Jesus said, whom do men say that I am? And the disciples answered. They some say that thou art Elias and Jeremiah. And Jesus turned around and said, whom do you say that I am? And bold Peter, he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed us to you, but it was my father which is in heaven has revealed us unto you. And upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. And Jesus went on to say, to tell the disciples there are many things that I must suffer. And after he finished, Peter came back and rebuked the Lord and said, no, Jesus, this is not going to happen. And Jesus turned around and he said, Satan, get thee behind me. For you do not know the things of God. You know the things of man. So I say that to say, Satan cannot give good and perfect things and gifts. Only God can do that. Because he is good and he is perfect. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. You don't know the things of God. You're not mindful of the things of God. The holy, righteous things of God. The pureness of God. The undefiledness of God. The unblemished things of God. But you perfect, you know the things of man. So let's continue. Verse 16, James 1 and 16. Right? So do not be misled, my beloved brothers and sisters. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights. Mind you, God is light. And in him is no darkness. The creator and sustainer of all of heavens, of the heavens, in whom there is no variation, no rising or setting or shadow, cast by his turning, for he is perfect and never changes. Do you see that? He is perfect and never changes. Say this, God is perfect, God is perfect. and never changes. never changes. God is perfect, God is perfect. and never changes. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Even though you and I are wishy-washy, God is perfect and he never changes. He never changes. There is no variables in God. He never changes. His word never changes. Heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will remain. God is perfect. And he never changes. He is perfect. If you don't walk away with nothing else so far, walk away with God is perfect. And he never changes. Hmm. Verse 18. It was of his own will that he gave us birth. Hmm. It was his own will that he gave us birth as his children. So we are children of a perfect God. Come on. We are children of a perfect God. Once we have been translated out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son Jesus, we become children of the perfect God. And that he gave us birth as his children by the word of truth. So he gave us birth as his children by the word of truth. The word of truth is Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the word of truth. Look what he says, right? He says, Jesus is a sustainer. He sustains all things by the, and upheld all things and sustained all things by the word 
of his power. Let alone, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we are God's children by the word of truth, meaning by Christ Jesus. And that's why if anyone is suffering from insecurity, please understand, once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it's no longer of your imperfections. You no longer have imperfections. Once you are in Christ Jesus, all of your imperfections goes away. All of your insecurity goes away. And now your self-worth, meaning your worth, is in Christ Jesus. And Christ is the head of all things. And if once you believe that Christ is the head of all things, there's nothing for you to be insecure about. Because your self-worth is the one who overcame the world, Jesus. The one you put your trust in, the one who puts your security, that you put your security in, is the one who overcame the world. And he's seated right now on the right hand of the Father. For Ephesians says that God quickened us up together with Christ. And he made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus on the right hand of the Father. Mm -hmm. So what are you insecure about? Find yourself in God's security. So we were sons by the word of truth so that we become, look what, so that we, be, that we be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. A prime example of what he created to be set apart to himself. Sanctified, made holy for his divine purpose. So you know we were and we are created to be set apart for God himself. Sanctified, made holy for a divine purpose. I am convinced that many are called but few are chosen. I am convinced that the ones who are chosen, they don't have a choice. They don't have a choice. The ones I'm convinced that the ones who are chosen, I'm talking about the ones who are chosen by God, they don't have a choice. It's either they serve God or die. They don't have a choice. There's some who, who don't have a choice. He even told Jeremiah 1 and 5, I love it, that before you, were, before you were formed in your mother's belly, I knew you. Who has that power to know you before you came to your physical existence? He told Jeremiah, before I formed you, I knew you. Before you came out of the womb, I ordained you. And here it is here, we see again, Paul is saying that we are set apart, sanctified, and made holy for a divine purpose, for his divine purpose. Some people don't have a choice. Some dibble and dabble in the Lord. And you look at them, they're like, oh shoot, how they prospering? It may appear that they prosper. But the one who are chosen and chosen. Remember, many are called. Many called. You got to look at that. Many are called, but only few are chosen. There's something, something is about that. Something about the few that are chosen. They don't have a choice. They cannot do what others do. They cannot live a life like how other lives live, or other people live their life. And I'm telling you the truth. I asked that question to the Lord. I said, Lord, how is it that other people, preachers, teachers, ministers, one believe, one who don't believe, how is it that they are able to do these things and it appears they get away with it? 
But the minute I will do something, I get caught quick fast. Something, I, I'm, I'm saying something. Only few are chosen. And they don't have a choice of the matter. You cannot live a life. Some cannot live a life. How other live. Mm -hmm. And I tell you the truth. And for me, I, 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 I let you know my stuff. For many years, especially growing up in the church, I tried to fit in. I tried to fit in playing the drums. I tried to fit in playing the organ. I tried to fit in doing a videographer. I tried to fit in and in, in doing sound. I tried to fit in, in doing being a, a a male nurse. I tried to fit in doing a, a what you call the, the armor bearer. I tried to fit in so many things with so many people, trying to fit in with people. And in the midst of it, I felt all alone. I felt uncomfortable, I felt all alone, but I kept on going with it because I gotta validate myself. I gotta validate myself. I was walking in insecurity. I was walking in so many things. In the middle of people, in the middle of friends, I'm talking about friends, close friends, brothers. In the midst of all of that, I felt so alone. And it's not until this year, Revelation, I was not meant to fit in. I was not meant to do these things, to get validation. I was missing something. Voids were all in my life. Tried so many things. Still felt empty. While I was going to church. So many things still felt empty. I tell you the truth. How many of you that are watching and standing before me are trying to fill voids with physical things to try to fill a spiritual void? It's only God that can fulfill that void in your life. And I'm talking about self-deception. I was deceiving myself. The more I try to play the drums, I will be accepted. I tried to see myself. I, I tried. I did deceive myself. The more I tried to learn an organ and a keyboard, I was deceiving myself. I'll be accepted. The more I do of the physical ministry, I would feel or believe that I would be validated. Mm -hmm. Only to find out that the works of God does not substitute the relationship of God. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. yep. I just learned that just now. The works of God. Doing God's work. Look what the Bible says. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Look what the Bible says. So many come in my name and say, Lord, I cast out demons in your name. I affect people in your name. And Jesus said, he will say that I'll de depart from me. You workers of iniquity. Because I never knew you. How many of us are doing the work but don't have the relationship? The work of God never is to be replaced by the relationship of God. True work comes out of the relationship. Not work in the relationship. Because you can work and not have the relationship and then you want to close in your eyes and you're standing before the judgment. And he said, depart from me, I never knew you. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who I'm talking to. But understand this, the works of God is never to be replaced by the relationship with God. And I, I pray for the wisdom and the knowledge because I didn't know this. Let's go back. we reading at... Verse 19, James chapter 1, verse 19. Now, in 16, James said, don't be misled. And chapter, nine, uh, uh, chapter, uh, verse, chapter 1, verse 19, he says, understand this. So he wants us to understand something. 
He said, understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters, one who is loved. Let everyone be quick to hear. Be a careful, thoughtful listener. You know, there's this thing called active listening. And this word or this phrase, active listening, is listening with the intent to change. So James says, be quick to hear. Be quick to hear, slow to speak, a speaker of carefully chosen words, and slow to anger, patient, reflective, forgiving. Let's just stop right there. So James was saying, understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters, be careful of chosen words. But he said first, before he said that, he says, be quick to listen, to hear. Listening with the intent to change. And slow to speak. You know, we do the opposite. <laughs> we blabber at the mouth before we even listen. <laughs> we blabber at the mouth. We are quick to speak before we even listen. For various reasons. We want to get our point across. We want to be right. Especially the wives out there. And the husbands. <laughs> Got to be fair. <laughs> we so quick to speak out of ourselves before we even listen. So James admonishes us. And he says, wait a minute, be quick to hear, quick to listen, and slow to speak, and slow to anger. Now let's read that backwards. You'll be slow to anger if you slow to speak and be quick to listen. <laughs> Let's read that backwards. You will be slow to be angry when you are not quick to speak so fast and you'll be quick to listen if you're quick to listen. Verse 20, for the resentful deep-seated anger of a man does not produce the righteousness of God, that standard of behavior which he requires from us. Verse 21, so get rid of all uncleanness and all that remains wicked of wickedness. So the Lord, through James was speaking and telling us to get rid of all uncleanness. To get rid of all uncleanness and all that remains of wickedness. You see, a child of God who does not constantly cleanse his ways will find himself in unclean, wicked ways. A child of God who does not constantly cleanse his ways will find himself in unclean, wicked ways. That's why we have to constantly cleanse ourselves. We're getting there because it's all part of mis it's all part of self-deception. And he said, all that remains of wickedness. You know, in the first part of this, the teaching of self-revelation I something was revealed to me by the Lord through a dream and in the dream I thought that I was over something I thought that I didn't have this particular thing in me no more that I was totally delivered from it but in the dream the Lord showed me I had some residue I had some remains 
of that thing that I was experiencing. And here, James is saying, get rid of all uncleanness and get rid of all the remains of wickedness. And look what it says. With the humble spirit, this is how you get cleansed. With the humble spirit, receive the word of God, which is implanted, actually rooted in your heart. Which is able to save your soul. That is the answer to self-deception as well, but I'm going to get there. How do one cleanse his ways? Mm. Psalms 19. How can a man cleanse his ways? By taking heed the word of God. And later on it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So look what it says. In order to cleanse your ways, Right? It says, with a humble spirit. That means humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Humble yourself under God. It says, submit yourself to God. Submit yourself to God. And receive the word of God. So, for somebody today, I admonish you to submit yourself to God and receive the word of God. Because it is the same word that can cleanse you and it's the same word that can save your souls. Verse 22, but prove yourselves doers of the word Actively and continually obeying God's precepts and not merely listeners who hear the word but fail to internalize its meaning. This is my point of self-deception. Don't be only a hearer of the word but a doer of the word. Look what it says. So prove yourselves doers of the word actively and continually obeying God's word. So a doer, not just hear God's word, but they do. They, they, they are continually obeying God's word, his precepts. And not merely listeners who hear the word and fail to internalize its meaning. Look what it says. Deluding yourselves. You know what that word deluding means? Deceiving yourselves. Here lies my topic, self-deception. Deceiving yourselves, deluding yourselves by unsounding reasoning contrary to the truth. You're deceiving yourself if you believe that you can only be a hearer and not a doer. Self-deception. How many of us, including me, this is why it's so important to me, been walking so long I've been hearing the word, but in certain areas, I have not been a doer. Here lies the cycle I keep seeing every year. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. I thank you for the answer, Lord. I thank you for the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge that just came to me. If you see yourself struggling in the same thing year after year, time after time, self-deception, the word of the Lord is here right now telling you, you're deceiving yourself if you think that you can be a listener and not a doer. Here lies my problem. That I got, I just received the answer to in studying this. <laughs> and I thank you, Lord, because it just, it just, thank you, Lord, it, it, it just came back to me as He reminded me that 
one cannot confess and declare and convince himself what he knows to be true and not believe in the heart. Because when one believes in the heart, the actions back up what has been confessed. A hearer and a doer receive God's results. A hearer and a doer. Jesus always said, he always, he always heard what the Father was saying in heaven. He said, I don't do anything on my own. I only do what I see my Father do. And every single time he received the results of the Father, Jesus did not fail because he believed what he heard and did what the Father did in the heavenly places. Therefore, he always received the results of the Lord. He told the fig tree, he, the fig tree did not produce. He cursed the fig tree. And the next day, as the Jesus and his disciples, his boys, went back by the tree, Peter said, Lord, look at the tree that you cursed. It withered away. Whoa, wait a minute. It ain't not, Jesus wasn't surprised. He would be surprised if it didn't wither away. <laughs> Jesus, I expected for it to be, to be withered away. I'm telling you the truth. Hear the word of the Lord. My prayer for everyone, Lord, give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Yeah. Who's deceiving themselves? Verse 23, for anyone who only listens, look at it, for anyone who only listens to the word without obeying it, he is like a man who looks very carefully at his natural face in the mirror. And once, for once he has looked at himself and gone away, he immediately forgets what he looked like. So James is comparing now that for if only, for if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it, Meaning without being a doer of it. Right? He is like a man who looks very carefully at his natural face in the mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he immediately forgets what he looks like. So in other words, when we look in the mirror, you are able... To see yourself in the mirror. But James is saying. The one who only listens. Soon as he leaves that mirror. He forgot. Or he forgets what he looks like. And that's why. Physically naturally. Some people got to go back to the mirror. <laughs> okay. Now. Now. Verse 25, but he who looks carefully into the perfect law, the law of what? Liberty. And faithfully abides by it, not having become a careless listener who forgets, but an active doer. You see that? Not only become a careless listener, how many of us listening carelessly? Huh, you coming in? Oh, I heard this before. So why you got the same things in your life? <laughs> you want to be arrogant? Go ahead. I heard this before. Yeah. So why are you still experiencing the same thing? Because you're listening carelessly. Pride, arrogance. But he who looks carefully in the perfect law, the law of liberty, and faithfully abides by it, not having become a careless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys, he will be blessed and favored by God in what he does in his life of obedience. 
I tell you the truth today that the mirror, the mirror that one needs to look into is the word of God. The word of God is the mirror. And just like how you look in the mirror and you can see the little hairs that come up. You can see the little, the nose hair and the little boogers and all that mucus stuff coming up in there. You can see the pimples that's coming, you know. It's just like how the reflection, the word of God, that when you look in the word of God, you begin to see all these little stuff. All this little stuff that's about you, that you need to correct. And what you do. If you're about to shave and you see the little hairs coming, what you do? You get a razor, you get some, some, some uh, shaving cream, and you begin to shave. Same thing with the Word of God. The same thing as you look into the Word of God, and you begin to see little things that you need to adjust, little things that you need to cut, little things that you need to trim, little things. It's the same way that you need to take what you need to change and change. And change. Is everybody getting this? Yes. It's good? Okay. Because it sure enough hit me. A person can repeatedly, look at this. Uh, while, while I'm saying this, let's turn to Luke 6. A person, a person who, uh, not who, but a person can repeatedly tell themselves something and begin to believe it. All right? A person can continually, repeatedly tell themselves something and eventually they will believe it. You can have a blue shirt sitting in the mirror and if you constantly tell yourself, I have a green shirt on, I have a green shirt on, I have a green shirt on, I have a green shirt on. Eventually, whether it be the 10th time or the 100,000th time, eventually you're going to convince yourself that you got a shirt on that's green. And how many of us are deceiving ourselves with lies? How many of us are deceiving ourselves with the lies? Convincing us something. That is, but it's actually not. Or vice versa. Convincing us of something that's not, that is. Luke chapter 40, uh, excuse me, Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Thank you. And it reads, thank you. And it reads, look at this. In order to have a secure foundation, what must we really do? We must do. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not practice what I tell you? Why do, why do you call Jesus Lord, Lord, and you don't practice what he tells you? Someone is deceiving themselves. How can you call Jesus the most high the son of the living God, mm -hmm. the son of man, the, the prince of kings, the prince of peace, the prince of life. You call him Lord, Lord, and do not practice what he tells you. That person is deceiving themselves. <laughs> Everyone who comes to me Jesus is saying, everyone who comes to Jesus and listens to my words and obey them, I will show you whom he is like. All right, now. So first we saw the mirror. Mm -hmm. And the word of God is the mirror. And now Jesus is saying, the one who listens to me and obey, meaning the one who listens and do. Mm -hmm. The one who listens and do. Obeying is... Uh, <laughs> Um, obeying is a uh, uh, man. I forgot that word, but it's 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 active. It's it's you're doing it. So 
when one is listening and obeying, he is like what? Let's read verse 48. He is like a far-sighted, practical, and sensible man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. So one who obeys the word of God after they heard is like a practical, sensible man who built a house, who dug deep to build a, a, found, a sound foundation, mm -hmm. right? So when a flood occurred, or occur, the torrent burst against the house and yet could not shake it because it has been securely built and founded on the rock, meaning it founded on a sound foundation. Mm -hmm. So a man who listens, a man who obey, is like a, excuse me, a person who listens and a person who obeys God's word, meaning a listener and a doer, is like a man who builds a, a, a sound foundation of the house, so when the winds come, when the storms come, it will not be moved, it will not be shaken because the foundation is firm, is secure. And that's what the Lord is saying. Do not be deceived. Do not have self-deception or don't deceive yourself that if you are a listener and a doer, you will have a secure foundation in your relationship with him and having a secure foundation with your relationship with him, you will see the results of the Lord. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. You will receive the results of the Lord when you're listening and when you are doing, meaning listening and obeying. Look what it says, verse 49. But the one who has merely heard, who has merely heard, this is, the, this is the one who deceived themselves. But the one who has merely heard and has not practiced what I say, he is like a foolish man who built a house on the ground without any foundation. And when the burst came against it, it immediately collapsed and ruined of that house mm -hmm. was great. Yep. And the ruins of that house was great. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So, just do an evaluation on yourself. Amen. And are you a listener and a doer? Or are you just a listener? Mm -hmm. And if you are deceiving yourself, and you're telling yourself that I still can receive the riches of God and the inheritance of God without doing and just by listening, you are deceiving yourself greatly. And that's why when the storms come in your life, that's why you revert you. Thank you. That's why when the storms come back in your life or when the storm comes in your life, you revert back to your babyhood. You notice when every, most of the time when, when, when people get hurt or they, um, I have noticed that when, when people get shot, they, there's a certain position that they fall into and it looks like a fetus position. Mm -hmm. And every time when you don't do as well as listen, You go back to your fetus position. Mm. Jesus. You go back to your immaturity. Mm -hmm. You go back to that baby stage. Mm -hmm. You go back and cry, oh Lord, oh Lord, why me? <laughs> oh Lord. When you don't have me lay down, my birds. Oh, Lord. And 
Jesus clearly puts it very clearly that when you obey what you listen, what you heard, you have a secure foundation. And he made it clearly that when you don't obey, you do not have a firm foundation. And that's why if you look at over your life in time past to present right now, when every storm came, you went back to your immaturity. And you wound up seeing the same cycle. And by right, you will always see the same cycle. Like how I have been seeing the same cycle. Because if you don't follow God's principle, how do you expect the hand of God? If you don't follow God's principle, how do you expect the hand of God? Let's turn to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16. Verse 1. Proverbs chapter 16. Verse 1. And it reads, look what it says, the plans and reflections of the heart belongs to man. You see that man, man always want to plan and do. But look what it says, but the wise answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Verse 2, all the ways of man, look what it says. All the ways of a man are clean and innocent in his own eyes. And he may see nothing wrong with his actions. Do you see that? Yes. Um, all the ways of a man are clean and innocent in his own eyes. You know, things that we do, we think we're right in. We think that we ain't doing nothing wrong. We don't see nothing wrong. <laughs> you know, after a while, when one received the lie, they don't see nothing wrong. They, to them, again, I said, to them, it becomes their truth. Not the truth. It becomes their truth. Now they're believing in a lie. A man, all the ways of a man seems right, clean, and innocent in his own eyes. Let, let me start right there. You notice, I never today convey to you that Satan is the cause of this. I never convey to you why. Before Satan even comes in, there's you. Before, Satan can only come in, or his spirits can only come in, his evil spirits can only come in when you open the door. For them to come in. I never mentioned that. Why? Because we ain't talking about him. We're talking about you. We're talking about self. We're talking about self-deception. Now after you open the door. He does come in. Him and his boys do come in. But. Initially. No one has the right. Except for God. No one can do anything to you or you allow, no one can do anything to you except you allow them to do so. It's when you, I said earlier, it's when you give up your right, your power to that thing, that's when that thing becomes or overtakes you. Other than that, You hold the power. Mm -hmm. But when you give up that power, here lies so many troubles. Mm -hmm. So that's why I didn't mention Satan, because it's not about Satan. Because we blame Satan for a lot of things he had nothing to do with. A lot of things was me, 
you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right. Um, verse 2, all the ways of a man are clean and innocent in his own eyes, and he may see nothing wrong with his actions, but the Lord weighs. You see that? The Lord weighs and examines the motives and intents of the heart and knows the truth. So whether, let me tell you something, you can deceive yourself if you want to, but there's one person that you can never deceive, and that is God himself. For Paul said, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. You cannot deceive God. Why? Because it says right here, the Lord weighs and examines the motive and intents of the heart, and he knows the truth because he is the truth. <laughs> Verse 3, commit your works to the Lord. Submit and trust them to him, and your plans will succeed. You see that? How is one successful? Is when you commit your works to the Lord, submit and trust them to him, and your plans will succeed. If you respond to his will and guidance. You see that? Mm -hmm. You are successful when you commit your works to the Lord. And you will succeed if you respond to his will. Mm -hmm. That's why all things work together for good. Mm -hmm. For them that are called mm -hmm. according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. His purpose, His will. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with your whole heart and lean, lean not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths with an S. He will direct your paths. That is the way of success. Verse 4, the Lord has made everything for His own purpose. You see that? Even the wicked according to their role for the day of evil. Even the wicked according to their role for the day of evil. Verse 5, everyone who is proud and arrogant in heart is disgusting. I didn't say this. This is what it says here. <laughs> Don't say it. Preacher said it. That's disgusting. No, this is the word of God. Look what it says. Everyone who is proud and arrogant. That's how the Lord feels, you know, about pride and arrogance. He said, I give grace to the humble and I resisted the proud. Everyone, and it, it, this is, that word disgusting just have a meaning. It's just, it's just whew. Everyone who is proud and arrogant in heart is disgusting and exceedingly offensive to the Lord. Why? Because one who is arrogant and prideful cannot receive the instructions of the Lord. <coughs> they cannot receive the instructions of the Lord. Why? Because they, they self-deceive themselves. They think that they have the answers on their own. They think they can figure it out by themselves. <coughs> Be assured, he will not go unpunished. <clears throat> so the one who is proud and the one who is arrogant, prideful, have they day, they will not go unpunished. They have their reward. Again, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sow, that shall he also reap. <clears throat> Verse 6, by mercy and love and kindness and truth, not superficial ritual. Wickedness is cleansed from the heart. Mm -hmm. Remember we, we also read in James. Mm -hmm. That uh, cleanse yourself. Right? And, and, and free yourself off of the remains of wickedness. You do it by submitting yourself. Submitting your spirit to receive the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and by fear of the Lord one avoids evil. So one can avoid evil, or one avoids evil by the fear of the Lord. 
You know, there's certain things in my life as I walk out this journey of life, if I even have a thought to do something, or if I make a, a step to do something that's contrary to God, there's such a fear of the Lord that come in me, in my heart, that stops me from making that decision. I tell you, the fear of the Lord, the convictions of the Lord are guardrails in your life. They're guardrails of your life, in your life. It stops you from doing or saying something that you should not be doing or you should not be saying. Verse 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, look at this, when you are a hearer and a doer of the word, you, you, your ways pleases the Lord. Your ways pleases the Lord. And when your ways pleases the Lord, look what it says. He makes even your enemies to be at peace with you. Look at that. When you please the Lord, he even makes your enemies be at peace with yeah. you. Last scripture and I'm closing. John 8. John 8. John, St. John, chapter, chapter 8, <clears throat> verse 31, and I'm closing. We're talking about self-deception. John, chapter 8, verse 31, and it reads, So Jesus was saying to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, meaning continually obeying my teachings mm -hmm. and living in accordance with them, then you are truly my disciples. Hallelujah. So we are the disciples of Christ, the body of Christ, when we abide in God's word and obey his teachings. Yes. Again, how can you call me Lord and not obey my commandments? Yeah. Yes. And how many of us are sitting in church calling Lord, Lord, and do not obey his word? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they listen to it, they hear it, but not with the intent to do. Yes. And here lies the cycle, deceiving yourselves. And you will know, verse 32... And you will know the truth. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. You will know the truth regarding salvation. Hallelujah. And the truth will what? Set you free from the penalty of sin. Mm -hmm. And I'm finished. Mm -hmm. You will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. So how many of you and how many of you are deceiving yourselves and are being a hearer but not a doer of God's word? How many of us say Lord, Lord, and not obey the commandments of the Lord? How many of you are listeners and not doers? In which you're deceiving yourself. And here lies the problem. Because you keep seeing the same cycle in your life. Mm -hmm. And the result is. Insanity. <laughs> you keep hoping. You keep hoping. That something is going to change. But nothing is changing. Mm -hmm. And mind you. Please don't forget. That it is never God's fault. Mm -hmm. It's never God's fault. We said earlier that God is perfect and he never changes. Mm -hmm. So if God is perfect and never changes, which he is, that means it's never his fault. Mm -hmm. And he said if a man pleases his ways, he even make his enemies at peace with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if God is telling us these principles and we keep seeing the same cycle, that means it ain't God. Mm -hmm. That means we, 
His children are not listening to the principles, the commandments, his word. And that way, we're not seeing the results of God. Mm -hmm. It's proven. Two plus two is four. Two plus two is four. Mm -hmm. Listening to God's word, obeying God's word will always yield God's results. Plain and simple. It's when you move one out of the equation, the problem don't make any sense. <laughs> you cannot be a hearer and not a doer, and you cannot be a doer without being a listener. See, the insanity comes from we try to hear, not do, and expect God's results. That's what's happening in our lives. And there lies the, res the, the cycles all over again. And you find yourself four years into it, five years into it, ten years into it, thirty years into it, and no change. Oh, Lord, why is no change, Lord? I've been faithful unto you. You've been faithful to what? Because God clearly says, if you hear and do, you see the results of me. So that means something didn't add up. That means something ain't adding up. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. So if you are walking in self-deception, here is the solution. And it's so simple. The solution is to avoid deception, self-deception. The solution is seek the truth, which is God's word. Mm -hmm. Love the truth, which is God's word. Mm -hmm. Obey the truth, which is God's word. Mm -hmm. And abide in the truth, which is God's word. That's a solution to avoid self-deception. Mm -hmm. I read it again. Seek the truth, which is God's word. Mm -hmm. Love the truth, which is God's word. Mm -hmm. Obey the truth, which is God's word. Mm -hmm. And abide in the truth, mm -hmm. which is God's word. Mm -hmm. Let's say this, y'all. Let's say it together. Let's, let's just quickly say it together. Seek the truth, Seek the truth which, is God's word. which is God's word. Love the truth, Love the truth which is God's word. Which is God's word. Obey, the truth, Obey the truth which is God's word. And abide in the truth which is God's word. And Father, we thank you for your perfect gift and your perfect time. Thank you for sending us the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Thank you for giving us a spirit of, of wisdom and revelation Hallelujah. and the knowledge of Christ. Yes. Thank you for opening the eyes of our understanding. Thank you, Lord, that we will be examiners of ourselves and that we will look to the mirror, look in the mirror of your word. Amen. And that we will adjust and fix what is necessary in our lives. To take away so that way we will no longer walk in deception from ourselves. That way we will no longer walk in insanity. But we will be a hearer of the word. We will be a doer of the word. And we shall receive the results of the Lord, of you God. Thank you for your perfect word. Thank you for your perfect word that we now have. For we know that faith come by hearing, hearing the word of the Lord. But now, Lord, we heard, and our faith is up to change. But now, we're going to be doers of your word. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we're not going to be the same anymore after this day. After this day, after this word, we will no longer be immature children of the Lord. But we will look intently into the eyes and the mirror of the word of God for us to grow maturely in you, Christ Jesus.
And we thank you for your perfect word. We thank you for your perfect gift. And we thank you for your perfect gift in your perfect time. And we thank you, Lord, because you can give us your perfect gift in your perfect time because you are perfect mm -hmm. and you never change. And we thank you for remaining the same always. Mm -hmm. We thank you for remaining the same always. Mm -hmm. Your perf perfections. And Lord, we honor you and we adore you, Lord, that we seek the truth, we love the truth, we obey the truth. And we abide in the truth. Yes. For did from this day, even until forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.